This is Logical Logistics, where we cover shipping, supply chain, logistics, and everything in between. Welcome to the show. Hey everybody, it's Joe Beck once again with Logical Logistics. Today our guest is Stephen Estes from PKI Logistics. Stephen, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, so tell us a little bit about PKI, uh, the business strategy, the formulation, uh, what kind of... What kind of uh, are you a broker? Are you a forwarder? Are you, how, what? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little different. So uh, okay. PKI started back in 1991. Right. Uh, we were we were a shipper's agent, which was actually a, a new title that we created as a company. All right. um, nobody else was doing it. Um, we didn't broker freight. Uh, wasn't a forwarder. Basically, we we arranged the shipment uh, directly from the customers working. Really, as an off-site shipping manager, we handled all the logistics for our com- our customers. Okay. Um, so the way that uh, we did it is we charged the customers a flat fee uh, for you know our service, and then uh, went ahead and advertised and uh, covered the loads you know on the boards or uh, with carriers that that we knew, and the customer paid the carrier directly. Really good system. Yeah. So it's it t- it's a flat fee. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Is it on a monthly basis or how? Did... Um, no, we break it down by the load. Uh, yeah. The flat fee per load. Okay. Uh, comes in comes in way less than uh, what an average broker would charge on a load. Yeah. And uh, the way the way that we're able to do this is that um, I have uh, a company that has zero debt. I have very low overhead. Yeah. Um, my salespeople uh, employees work uh, strictly on a commission basis based on uh, you know the sales that they make which is all factored into the, the flat fee service. And um, what's interesting about the flat fee, <clears throat> the reason that we did it this way, uh, a, a lot of times what happens with brokers is, you know, since they charge a percentage of the load, uh, you know, as, as their fee for running them, uh, it kind of behooves them to get the most money that they possibly can uh, to cover a load because they're going to make more, you know, per load. With us, the flat fee remains the same whether the load costs a thousand dollars to move or or five thousand to move. Yeah, that that fee doesn't change. So what that does is uh, that gives us the, us the motivation to get the loads uh, at at the lowest possible cost, so that the customer gives us return business. And that's that's kind of the model that we've worked on uh, ever since '91. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Now a couple of years, I, I did uh, I, I did uh, register as a broker. Um, we're we're fully licensed, insured, bonded, all that good stuff. Um, probably overinsured, actually. Yeah. Uh, but Who the isn't? reason that we did the reason that we did that is because um, our customers had requested it, uh, mainly due to the billing yeah. uh, side of it, because they didn't want to have to write two checks on every load. Okay. All right. So, Interesting. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it, it it's a lot different. It's a lot different from pretty much any other model out there right now. And yeah. uh, to our knowledge, nobody else does it. You know this way. Yeah, it's fascinating to uh, be able to talk to someone that's so uh, revolutionary in the industry like that. Um, well, we go on. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, no, go. You go. No, I was going to say. You know, it, um, the 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 original founder of the company. He had been in. Um, you know the freight business for 40 years before he started the company. He he'd done it all: trucks, rail, uh, ocean, everything. He'd worked for some of the biggest companies in the country and in Canada. Um, and what what he had seen over that time was, you know, there's there's a lot of greed, uh, there's a lot of dishonesty in the business, and you know it felt dirty to him, which is why he started his own company, which was you know PKI in '91. And by doing the flat fee service, it, it took away, you know, all that possibility to be dirty. You can't you can't cheat the customer. You can't cheat the carrier because the billing is completely transparent. Everybody knows what everybody else is getting paid. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it just makes it more honest. And, you know, there's enough freight out there for everybody, you know, um, in my opinion. You don't have to go in and try and steal everybody else's business. You know, do do what you do and do it well and be honest and, you know, you'll be in business for a long time. That is such sage advice because I'm in the, I'm on the forwarding side actually. Right. And, you know, I, and I do this podcast and yeah, for years it's just been cutthroat. In fact, I was just invited to 
partake in a a uh, it was it's for all the forwarders to get together and, and petition Congress and I'm like we can't even work together. <laughs> right. You know, it, it, I, I, it's, there's some of these people. If I turn my back, you know, I got to watch my wallet. So to hear that is so refreshing from a company yeah, like I, yours. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. You know, uh, you know, full disclosure. I mean, you know, uh, we're all Christian uh, in this company, so okay. we try and run the way that we run our business. We try and do it on that model. Yeah, you know, of, of being honest, uh, transparent. You know, a lot of uh, what happens with a lot of brokers, you know, and, and you've been in the in the business a long time, too, so you know how it is. A, a load gets moving where it's supposed to pick up, and, yeah, we'll be there in a minute, and they don't show up, and they don't show up, and then the driver drops off, and the broker doesn't tell you because they're trying to recover it with somebody else. You know, it ends up being a big mess. Right. Uh, I, I mean, I see it all the time with, the you know, my customers that have come to me from other brokers. That's something that we never do. You know, even though it hurts and maybe the uh, customer isn't going to be real pleased when you call them with bad news, we, we call them immediately, you know, oh, to let yeah. them know, hey, here's the problem. This is what's happened, you know, and uh, it, it they seem to appreciate that. I mean, uh, our customer recidivism rate is almost 100 percent. We've got customers that we've had since 91. Awesome. And, yeah. you know, not a lot of people in this business can say that, but, you know, it's, it's because of the model that we have, I, you know, and I don't mind sharing what we do with somebody else I'm, I'm not concerned about anybody taking our business model and running with it i hope they do yeah there needs to be more honesty in this in this industry because it, it can be a it can be a dirty business sometimes you know agreed yeah 100 percent. 100 percent. now where, where are you based out of uh we are in uh, tennessee in morristown tennessee okay and where is morristown it refresh me I, I know nashville i know knoxville i know Memphis. It's, it's closest yeah. to Knoxville. It's okay. About an hour and about an hour and ten minutes from Knoxville. I'd okay. Say. All right. About great. That. So uh, obviously the big elephant in the room is what's happening to our economy right now, and yes, the uh, COVID nineteen. What, what's your what's your take on it? Okay. Well, my take on it. Uh, first off, I'd like to say thank God that the economy was doing what it was before this happened, or right. it would be a whole different ball game right now. Oh yeah. Um, I was in a unique position to where I kind of had some inside information about this virus and how bad it was because, uh, you know, I had friends in Asia. Yeah. Uh, and they were kind of telling me back in January, hey, this is this is bad news, man, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I came to understand that this wasn't going to be like the bird flu or, you know, the swine flu or any of these other things that we had. And, uh I was able to kind of warn some of my customers ahead of time, like, hey, I, I think this is going to get bad. Yeah. Um, and, and I figured it was. I, I didn't think that it would shut down quite as hard as it has. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, it's probably for the best. Yeah. Um, I think that the country is going to be back open for business by May 1st. I have it on pretty good authority that that's going to happen. Okay. Um, I, I trust what the president's been doing, the vice president. You know, they've got some pretty smart people working on this, people that are smarter about it than me. Sure. But, um, you know, I, I, not to toot my own horn, but I've been pretty right about these things over the years. And I, I think I think we're looking at May, uh, maybe when we start to get back to some normalcy. Yeah, and it's going to be something I think we're going to ease back into. It's not just yeah. going to be all, all of a sudden we're going to ball games and restaurants, and it's going to be things that and people are going to be reluctant to go to these places too. If I, I mean, I I work out sure. constantly, and I'm going to be very diligent. I, I am anyway, but now I'm going to be even more diligent if I go back to the gym or when I do. But right, uh, of course. Yeah, no, it it's great. It's really refreshing to talk to someone uh, uh, in the business that has your outlook on on the way to do business and uh it's, well, it's really think, great uh, to hear. you know outside of that uh, before we move on from the, the whole uh, covid 19 issue yeah um I, I will say you know as tragic as it's been and you know there's been death and uh, you know a lot of sick people and everything i think aside from that in the long run it, it may turn out to be more of a blessing than anything else we have um you know um a supply chain right now that's highly, highly reliant on foreign sources for for our consumables. Right. Um, and even the the companies, the manufacturers that are here in the United States depend heavily on um, you know raw materials and parts that are coming from other countries. And I think that 
from what I'm hearing, there's going to be more of a shift to domestic production and uh, domestic acquisition of raw materials and parts, which in the long run I think will be far better for the economy. Uh, it'll take the transportation and logistics industry up into new plateaus, I think. Yeah. Because uh, the demand for uh, transportation that's going to come when this is all over and we start to retool here at home, I think it's just going to be a boon for everybody. Now, uh, you know, like I say, I, you know, I, of course, I feel bad for anybody that's gotten sick, and there's a lot of tragedy around that. But you know, in in a lot of these bad things, there is a silver lining. I think that's something that we can look forward to. I think when this is all said and done, we're going to come out stronger than we've ever been. To be honest with you, I I tend to agree with that, and I, I I'm I'm not a pessimist, but I'm a skeptic. But the logical part of my brain agrees with you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I spent a long, uh, large part of my life looking at numbers and, and trends like this, uh, you know, from other positions that I've had and, you know, my education and everything. So I'm kind of drawn to watch these things. And I, I think that, that in the end, it's given everybody pause to look at how we create things, where we get them from, how our supply chains are set up, who we depend on and who we should depend on. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it was something that eventually, you know, there's no way around it. Something like this was going to happen eventually. just happened to happen now. Yes. You know? Yeah. Well, Stephen, I, I can't thank you enough for joining us again. What's the best way for someone to reach you and PKI? Sure, I can give you a couple of ways. Uh, they can always call the office at uh, 844-391-8819. Uh, we're at our desks from seven in the morning till you know seven eight o'clock at night. So uh, and if we're not at the desk, the phones are always forwarded. So you always get a live person. All right. Um, you can also uh, go to the website, which is www.pkilogistics.com. Okay. And that's logistics with an S. Uh, you can also uh, email at uh, Stephen S T E P H E N at pkilogistics.com. I answer all emails personally. Excellent. Stephen, thank you so much. I hope you have a great Easter. You too, sir. Yeah, and I uh, hope to talk to you soon. Thanks for joining us. All right, call anytime. All right, bye. Thanks. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. If you want to drop us a line, email us at b-e-c-h-t-5 at comcast.net. You can leave comments, or if you want to be a guest, b-e-c-h-t-5 at comcast.net. Also, make sure to review us on iTunes or other media outlets that we're located on. Special thanks goes out to Anthony B., my producer. And we'll see you next time on Logical Logistics. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download us and review us on iTunes. Visit www.beslogistics.net for more logistics, transportation, and warehousing resources. Thanks for watching.